Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on Wednesday, hump day. <coughs> um, I guess it's the 16th, what is today? Yeah, 16th of November. Um, it should be a quiet morning. We've got some, uh, we've got some numbers out of North America today that are interesting. CAD CPI is going to lead the way. This is most interesting because um, of the employment numbers that came out of Canada last week. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second. First, let's look at sterling. Uh, we talked about it yesterday. Were we going to double top at 118.55? We got up to 44, um, slipped down to 12. Uh, and then heading back into the numbers, it looked a little bit dangerous, to be short, and sure enough, it was. Um, but 120 was the number. You had to be quick. Um, as always, if you had planned this trade before the numbers, it was a piece of piss, right? Easy peasy, right? Bang, you're paid. You spend like five seconds wondering uh, how, how much further this can go. Um, and then 200 points, round to 117.92. Um, we're back at 118.54. This is still a sell-on rally for me. The UK is fucked. That's like real, sort of global macro directional trade. Uh, and now we know where your stop is, so 120.28. So either get your average as close to 120.28 as you can or sell as close to 120.28. Uh, Word to the wise, right? So if you're selling 118.54s, it's pretty speculative, right? You're, what are you going to risk, 100 and 170 points? Are you going to make 1,000 points on this trade? Are you going to get a 10 to 1 risk reward? Um, so just be careful, right? You can't just, you can't just bang out a bid here and say, oh, I'm going to leave a 120.28 stop. That doesn't make any sense. It's not professional. Um, so if you missed the sell yesterday, be cool. You can feather up into this if you want. Um, you can do this a number of different ways. You could structure something. Um, but just make sure your your risk reward is tidy. This is the key to, um, to FX, right? You know, what's your average loss? What's your average win? We try for 10 times, right? We try our average wins are supposed to be 10 times our average losses. That's in a perfect world. That never really happens. That's the goal. Um, but if you can get into that six, seven, eight times, all of a sudden you get yourself into a pretty interesting trading system, right? All of a sudden your sharp is above three. Um, but you just got to be disciplined, right? And part of being disciplined is, is also doing nothing, which is what we're going to do this morning. Absolutely nothing. Um, let's look at rates first. Trumpy uh, is running for president for the Republicans. Uh, I think he's a douche and an embarrassment for America. Um, so that is what it is. I actually don't think he's going to get the nomination. I think DeSantis is going to probably get the nomination. Um, but... It's interesting. It'll be um, quite interesting to watch DeSantis and Trump tear each other apart with their idiotic little nicknames and their dumb marketing ploys and their like juvenile, I don't know, political muck raking. Um, but uh, as an American, you know, who obviously has lived overseas for thirty years, uh, it's just sad to see that uh, we can't. We can't come up with candidates uh, better than better than these fucking idiots, um, you know. And equally on the Democratic side, I think Biden's a muppet uh, and 80 years old, dude. Hang it up. Can't even fucking remember your last name. Um, gee, we uh, sorry, America, for what you guys have to live through this past. Um, I don't know, 20, 25 years. Uh, anyway, uh, politics aside, this should be bullish equities a little bit, the Trumpy thing. Um, you can see not much of a boost. Yes, right here. 
you know, we had this little move here from 88 to 05. It's so early. Uh, you can't really trade any anything directionally with a with Trump just saying I'm in the fray. He's also not a youngster, right? I think he's 76. <clears throat> so uh, God knows. Uh, you know, maybe he'll fall and, and maybe he won't be able to get up. Uh, and God knows uh, how that goes when you're that old. But uh, Nazi has also hasn't done too much. Quick look at crude because CAD is in play today. Kind of middling here, 86 bucks. Again, it's kind of sleepy between 90 and 80 or 85. This is pretty meaningless. Rates, 382. This is dovish. Aussie. Not doing too much. Here's the uh, PPI high, 6797. Um, not, no real trades here. So these charts are all going to look similar now, right? So we had the shock PPI high, and then we had the big fuck you retracement, and now here we are right back where we started going into CPI. Uh, this is pretty standard FX stuff. Shock high drops 230 points. Now we're right back where we were in cable. Dollar yen, same chart. All of these charts are exactly the same. Dollar Swiss with a little bit less vol. Dollar Swiss was also the most stretched, right? Well, I would say cable was the most stretched, but Dollar Swiss was also incredibly stretched, which is why I didn't really have much of a left hand side. It's fine. Um, nothing to do here this morning, right? Just sit tight, right? Part of part of professional trading is not trading, right? Don't trade when there's not a, when when don't trade when there are no setups. Here's something that we've talked about a lot. This is a setup, but um, 86.90. Or if you want to draw this line here, um, which some people will have drawn, it's kind of sexy, right? Three or four touches. It comes in at 87.08. Um, the low yesterday was 25. Again, there's no trade there. You're waiting. You know, you're waiting for the trigger point. And why are you waiting for the trigger point? Because you're assuming that there'll be other people selling when you're selling, which makes it easier for you on your entry. Um, again, not here to do the ABCs of trading, although I kind of am. Um, a lot of you guys come into my DMs and show me your trades and all this stupid shit. Um, I don't need to see your trades. I'm just here to try and give you a little bit of a an idea on a couple of different setups. You got to get in your own way, get out your own way, um, and you got to find a broker who's not going to fuck you, right? You know, I, someone called me the other day and they showed me three points wide on Euro dollars. Their little broker. I won't even say the broker's name, but you can't, you know. You got to be with professional people. You got to surround yourself with professional service providers in order to win at this business. Three wide in Euro when the real world is basically 0.1 wide or, or choice, um, you're fucked. So try not to fuck yourself. Um, if you're going to get fucked, get fucked by your wife, right? Don't get fucked by some broker. Uh, that's my advice for the day. Uh, sterling yen and euro yen I mean these are not really in play right there's no real flow here these are just at the mercy of these dollar side trades nothing really to do here again blah 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 nothing to do let's look at dollar Canada um, whoa somebody's calling um, let's look at dollar Canada here um, hold on. That was annoying. Um, let's look at Dollar Canada here because we have CPI today. Um, so if this thing comes in hot, what was our low yesterday? 132.27. If if this thing comes in hot, it's going to be tricky, but you're going to look for maybe a gap move to 27, some kind of a bounce, and then you resell on the little bounce. 
you're obviously not going to be get be able to get in or trade in the first 10 seconds of this number. You do not want to reach in that first 10 seconds. Um, so this will be very, very interesting, right? If this thing comes in hot, this thing could easily go 200 points. Uh, and if it comes in soft, you're going to see uh, stops above 133.60. Uh, and that's going to be really, there's going to be some flow there, right? Um, sorry, that's 133.40. There's going to be some flow there above 133.40 um, because the market is short dollar CAD. So if this comes in super soft, this is more of a break trade. If it comes in super strong, you wait for the reach, you resell the bounce, uh, you have a sensible stop. Uh, maybe you feather into that knowing that in the low liquidity, this thing could go anywhere. Think about the 135 break. It really fucked around between 134.80 and 135.40 before it really settled in lower. Um, and so this is quite quite an interesting trade. Euro CAD. Uh, I don't really. I don't, I don't really know here. I mean, uh, there's less flow in Euro CAD, uh, but if it comes in hot, you could smack the pony. Um, in Euro oh wait, where is EuroCAD? Sorry. If it comes in hot, you can smack the pony here. Same idea. Wait for a bounce. It goes down to 136.90. Try and do a resell. There'll probably be a little less ball in EuroCAD than there is in CAD. The CAD yen chart. Um, again, so they're all pretty much the same. You know, you you you're. you're if this thing comes in strong, you look for a touch of 105.90. But the problem with CAD yen is dollar yen is firmly offered. So be careful with CAD yen. I would avoid CAD yen. Euro CAD, dollar CAD look to be the horses. Here's the kicker uh, we have retail sales. Um, at the same time today. So got to be careful with that. You got two releases and we'll have to see what happens there. So like, you know, obviously if Canada comes in hot and retail sales are shit, that gives more energy to dollar CAD. Um, just got to be careful, right? You just got to set this up and be ready it's now like a three three part moving piece you have price you have cpi and you have retail sales tricky uh and for those of you who are beginners just don't even bother trading this um you're surely gonna fuck it up uh and so just sit back and watch maybe do something in your head what would i have done watch the price action you know it's part of getting in your ten thousand hours of watching um going to be tricky uh 8 30 anyway I'm, I'm babbling a lot today and then we have all these interruptions i'm going to cut it here uh again you got i don't know six hours now to plan your trade think about what's going to happen think about these releases what happens if if retail sales comes in negative what happens if retail sales comes in plus two percent expecting one percent what happens if cpi in canada goes to seven percent or these are the th scenarios you have to think about, structure your trade, and then go make some dough. All right. Bit, uh, bit of a shitty, shitty recording today. Sorry about that. Uh, but uh, whatever. C'est la vie. Good luck out there, people. Talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.